The Lord is a man of war. I want to give all the honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rabbah Double honor to my elders at Great Millstone, dropping this truth through the Spirit. Singing honors to the elect. Peace and blessings be to all the saints of men, women, and children. The Duke consists of the one third. Shalom, Shalom. World War Three is imminent. It is on the brink, the precipice. Tensions are constantly rising between Russia and the United States. And before I get into um, my monologue, let me open up with Exodus 15 and 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Wherever you see Lord are all capital letters. That's Yahweh. So it should be read. Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. And it's also more evident that the Most High is a man, not a woman. Nonetheless, United States with their propaganda and their um, provocative rhetoric via their news channels is causing a, a stir with their allies as well. France and Germany actually befriends Russia and they don't want nuclear war, so to say. Neither does, neither does Ukraine, but you have to look at different so you have to look at different sites of news and media to grasp a better understanding. You see World War Three is um is relevant. It, it it can't be avoided. Like it says in the book of Revelation, the third or oh, two woes have passed and the third woe cometh quickly. The word woe means destruction. So the third World War Three is going to be destructive. Understand, let me get Isaiah 13. So, when it says that God is a man of war, think about the think about all the wars of every kingdom from the Babylonians. I'm a little um, hungry, so pardon if you hear my stomach. Think about the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Medes, the Persians, the Medo Persian Empire, then the Greeks. Then the Romans, I mean, all the way up into the time of the Middle Ages from Constantine, Constantinople, the Byzantine Empire. And then you have the, the vast migration of um, Mohammedans, in other words, of Islam during that time, which really was, back, you know, um, sanctioned by Jake. Trying to get back the Holy Land from um, Ishmael, but that's another story. Then you had the the Holy Roman Empire, the Black Popes in the tenth century, you know, and uh, all those wars, feuding, the movie Braveheart, and all of that. That that was just Jake against Jake, so called Black people against Black people, because we ruled you for a thousand years. That's why they don't speak too heavily about the Middle Ages or what they call the Dark Ages. Right then, you had uh, the period from you know you had King James and so forth and so forth. For then you had the Renaissance era, which is the rebirth of Satan that was loose that were bound for a thousand years, then loosed again, and here we are here again today. Right, because who was that bound for a thousand years? Esau, Eden, the so-called white man, woman, the child. When the Romans went down, um. Like a what, 167, 170 some AD, right? They were pushed up into the Caucasus Mountains, which is why they call themselves Caucasians. And then Esau, so called white man, woman, the child of day, Edomites, they sought their um, vengeance, their revenge on Jacob, so called um, Negro Latinos and Native Americans. Now, the reason why I mention all of this is because Everything that's occurring throughout the world today is pretty much um, 
the prefix to the Lord ushering in his kingdom and to come back and to save his people. So this is Isaiah 13 and 4. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. Yahweh of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. He said mustereth the host of the battle. That's heavy. So, these wars, these fronts, you know, um, the United States sending thousands of troops over to Ukraine, um, Canada, loaning billions of, is it billions of dollars? They're aiding Ukraine with heavy artillery, right? As you can see on all fronts, that there's kind of variance, but the Lord is the reason why this is happening. I remember we had a, um, a Shedamite, <laughs> Edomite woman that approached the camp, not last week, but the week before. And she was like, yeah, we don't want war with Russia. I said, I beg to differ. Because who can ever resist the will of the Lord? You see, <laughs> you got to remember, the Lord, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, He ruleth in the kingdom of men. There's no such thing as free will, people. <laughs> you have the will to think you're free, but technically you're on borrowed time. And I love using I love using this, this saying. How can any one of us have free will when we didn't have the free will to give ourselves birth? None of us had the free will to determine the day we we're going to be born. So how can you have free will? Life is all about chance and opportunities and building relationships with people. Hence, being around like-minded men. But that's another story. Daniel 4 and 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers. The watchers are the prophets. The men you see on the highways and byways preaching this truth. The men uploading videos. I just got what I just got my um, main um, page taken down. <laughs> I'm still going to keep pushing this word. Because woe is me if I preach not the gospel. And the demand by the word of the holy ones, the Bible, to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the bases of men. That's a heavy piece up. So, when you see all these heads, all these rulers making these moves, it's the Lord doing it. You got to understand. The Lord said, pride had deceived thee, Esau. You really think you came up out of what you did come out of the mountains, though, the caves. You really think that you just came up out of the mountains, created the, we're still in the Renaissance era, people, created the Renaissance era. You, you, you took the Lord's people, scattered them to the four winds of the earth. Then you conquered the entire world and you laid your nest above the stars. And you really think you did that yourself? Remember, the Lord said, um, it says right here, to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the bases of men. You're the bases of men. Job said you braying by the bushes and eating on juniper roots, man. The Lord said you had, he laid your heritage to the beast of the wilderness of the fields. That's why you want to be the last samurai. That's why you want to be the mommy. <laughs> right? Yeah, I even heard they even tried to make a movie where they want to pit Michael Jackson to be a so-called white man. But let it be a hundred years from now. They'll probably do it. <laughs> but we ain't going to be here that long. But that's, you know, you catch the drift. The Lord's controlling these aspects. And see, the Lord also created the smith that blew off the coals. Let's get that really quick. I'm not going to make this too long, y'all. I just had to touch on a couple of things. This is Isaiah 54 and 16. Behold, I have created the smith that blow off the coals in the fire, and that bring forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. What is that? The Lord has created the waster to destroy. Remember, the Lord ruleth in the kingdom of men. Hmm. I guess Robert Oppenheimer? The man that created, what was it, the atomic bomb? 
I remember it was a quote. I was gonna. I can't speak it verbatim. It's like when the atomic bomb went off, some people cheered for joy and some people cried. And he said, he thought about a mantra. Was it no a sutra? I think it was a sutra. I said mantra sutra. Um, from in India, and it says some to the extent I have become the destroyer of worlds. That's what an atomic bomb could do. A hydrogen bomb can do. But we're talking about nuclear now. Go online to YouTube and look up the detonation of Nagasaki Hiroshima. They said that the pilots had to wear glasses because the, the flash was so bright. And there was, I think there were like six out of seven generals that said we should have never done this. It was devastating. That's what the Lord created. He gonna use it against Babylon. Let's get that. Which is America. The mystery of Babylon is America. This is Jeremiah fifty one and one. Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, America, and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. A destroying wind. Now, and will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. It said empty the land, people. For in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. And like I said, you have allies of America. They're like, yo, hold on, you need to calm down. All right, what's the name? Trudeau and um, France. Even the German Chancellor, even Ukraine himself, key, they're like, hold on, U.S., y'all need to calm down, man. Y'all stirring the pot, you know, saying so y'all keep poking the bear, which the bear is Russia. See, man, you can't, you can't make these things up, man. You can't. There's, seen it. There's so many more precepts I can bring out. But now, knowing that these things are going to occur, I got to eat me something, boy. Second Peter chapter three. All right, hearken unto this. Verse ten. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Just talking about thermonuclear warheads going off. And when it says the heavens shall pass away, Peter saw the vision, and he saw the clouds dissipate, disappear. And the element shall melt with fervent heat. Just look at the periodic timetable. Our body consists of all those elements as well. So not only cars, jewelry, all of that. Mm -hmm. Once again, and the which the heaven shall pass away with great noise, and the element shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, dissolved, what manner of persons ought we to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So what manner of persons ought we to be right now? Turned up in the spirit. Don't fear it, just endure it. Lost my main page. I don't lost so many pages, man. I don't even. I don't even. I'm numb to it now. I just make another one because, despite the fact all the people who followed me and those who I was teaching, and they were being edified, I've done my part, but I still have more to go. Cause the, the only set of eyes you really want to be watching you do your work is your house Hashem Yahushai. But your house said, "What if you love me, feed my sheep." So that's the only thing that I don't like. I may have lost some sheep that from that page, but pretty much they're still getting fed. Because I'm not the only shepherd out here in the spirit. Okay. Um, 2 Peter 3 and 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless 
So with that being said, I pray it was edified and fed. Stay in the spirit. Don't fear it. Just endure it. Ask for forgiveness. Pray with us. Unceasing. Stay humble. Remain diligent. Go mention Allah. Muffle up a ball. Shalom.